Hey, welcome to the show. Um, if you don't know, I live streamed yesterday on uh, Facebook uh, on uh, the Real Progressives uh, Facebook uh, the Casey uh, Goodson Jr. Uh, protest yesterday. Uh, I think it was a call to action. Uh, that was about 50 minutes or so. Um, anyways, that's uh, if you don't if, if you haven't seen it, it's down below, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, anyway, so I'm hoping to do more of those uh, for World Progressives or for um, maybe for the other channel and I'm waiting to uh, develop with other protests that um, I may not be able to do on Real Progressives. Anyway, um, so I wanted to get to this little portion here. Uh, Wolf, uh, Wolfstreet.com has an article up, uh, asking... Uh, who bought the incredibly spiking U.S. Uh, government debt now $30.4 trillion in Treasury securities? The U.S. gross national debt has now reached $30.4 trillion, having spiked by a $7.0 trillion since March of 2020. Every one of these Treasury securities had to be bought and is held by some institution uh, institutional investor, bank, uh, government entity, or individuals in the U.S. or the or globally. The oh, let me turn it down a little bit. There we go. Or uh, individuals in the U.S. or globally. The red hot question is, what the heck have bought? Uh, wait, who the heck bought? Uh, and is holding all these treasury securities? First of all, it's important that he acknowledges that they are treasury securities, which means they have a, uh, a yield to them, which basically means that they are just a high yield or high yielding, um, basically same as accounts. I mean, a a anything that has a yield to it, uh, by definition, is a same as account. This, at least as far as, you know, if you, you have a regular big account, uh, uh, a savings account has like... I think it's zero one percent, uh, which is like what ten dollars every six every six months or something to that effect. Uh, but that's pretty much what U.S. securities are. Uh, and the Fed uses the word debt in two different ways. One, it means you know debt that you that you cash in and get actual cash uh, or you know bonds or whatever uh, whatever options they do have. And debt as in what, what outstanding as you haven't redeemed yet. So it's important to understand uh, the fact that, like every other word I've been, I've been saying, and don't know how long, uh, every word has a double meaning to it, you know, de depending on the context. Anyway, so Treasury Security uh, have become more attractive this year as yields have risen across the board but remain woefully below the rate of CPI inflation. And there's actually there's a U.S. Security uh, a U.S. Treasury called TIPS for such an occasion. Uh, yields have risen because investors demand higher yields to buy them. If there isn't enough demand for Treasury securities, then yields rise until there is enough demand. If yields rise enough, uh, I'm a buyer. Yield solves all demand problems. The Fed, the single largest buyer until early this year, is no longer adding to its holdings. And in June, it will start reducing its holdings even as the government will issue more debt and somehow and someone has to buy it all. So who is holding this treasury debt in our increasingly iffy times? Foreign creditors of the U.S. government, basically Japan, uh, $7.61 trillion at the end of a... Uh, of Q1, according to Treasury Department's Treasury International Capital uh, data, down by 134 billion from prior quarter, put up by 575. Oh, sorry, but up by 575 billion from a year ago. About 4.7 trillion of its held uh, of its held by foreign central banks and government entities. The rest by foreign institutional uh, investors. Corporate entities, banks, and individuals. Over the years, the U.S. gross national debt has out, outspiked their growing holdings by foreign entities, and at the end of Q1, for 25.1, .25 squeaking past the prior multi year low and down from 34% range in 2012 through 2015. 
dollar equals blue line and left scale. Uh, anyway, I told uh, and told U.S. debt, which is red line, which is uh, this is uh, in the graph that this person has below. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so Japan, which owns 1.23 trillion at the end of March. After a $74 billion plunge during the month, Japan remains the largest foreign creditor of the U.S. And with that plunge in March, is now about back where it had begun a year ago. So let's see. Agents of U.S. Treasuries can be um, a, a bank. Uh, I think a bank. Uh, well, the, the, the federal bank, obviously. Um like BlackRock, Blackstock, Blackstock, Blackstone, those people they they invest or buy uh, U.S. mortgage-backed securities uh, for either investors here in the United States, uh, like recently as uh, Jeff Bezos, um, which was like I think he got into the business yesterday. I'm not even sure about that, but I think it was some to that effect. Uh, they also have uh foreign investors so this is what that person is talking about they're actually investing through like a black black like a black stone which i believe i believe that's the company I'm, I'm i'm thinking of uh that has outside foreign investors who buy uh mortgage-backed securities uh here in the states uh I, a lot of it is either um companies that they want to expand their own companies uh like i think there's intel is coming to ohio in 2023 uh you have to buy a a, a mortgage backed security uh to do that you know on property uh so that's what i'm thinking is happening as far as that part goes it's not like it's oh my god we owe these people no they bought into a property they that's the that's the price they paid as far as that part goes that, that's an investment anyway um so see china one point uh, four trillion uh, riddled down to hold uh riddled down his holdings now where is they cash them out they redeemed them and it's no longer debt it's in their own central bank account it's yields they get a certain amount of yields every year since uh yields are interest rates uh the fed pays those interest rates they have since after 2008 before then, Congress actually said how much the Fed would be paying in its own rights, as far as that part goes. Uh, Japan and China have been uh, much less uh, have been much less important as creditors in the U.S. as the gross national debt has continued to outspike their relatively stable holdings. In March, Japan's share dropped to 4.1, and China's share dropped to 3.4. And other foreign holders, most of the 10 biggest foreign holders after Japan and China are tax havens and financial centers. Some of them just small countries that cater to global corporations and the elite, including U.S. corporations that can shelter their capital. There is, oh, I'm sorry, they're in offshore mailboxes and title uh, entit entities, there we go, where some of their treasury holdings are registered. Let's see, who was it? Um... Oh shoot! Uh, Schiff, is it Peter Schiff? Yes, he has a bank um, in uh, where the fuck is it? At? I think Puerto Rico. I think um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure about that. But I remember recently uh, his bank uh, that he owns um, was being investigated for uh, having um, illegal transactions uh, by different corporations, shell corporations, and others. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to that, but I'm gonna have to look back, look back at that up and and, uh, and see if there's any updates on that. But anyway, the largest uh, foreign holder uh, after Japan and China is the UK. We have 634 35 billion in treasury securities. This is the financial center of London, the London uh, laundry mat, and anyone uh, anyone anywhere could be the beneficial holder uh, beneficial holder. Of these securities, um, actually, I can see them being um, invested in more or less uh, Pfizer, Moderna, and all that, and the Fed, who is, I guess, I guess you could say the intermediary between the, since it is a government entity, uh, that they would be the uh, the. I, um, 
moderated between the vaccine corporations and the United States and, and their and their uh, contracts as far as uh, the vaccines go. So that's the only thing I can think of in regards to that, and especially when there's only $635 billion. And because I believe uh, uh, AstraZeneca, uh, which is actually a company that's based in, I think, China, um, close to, I want to say close to Wuhan, I'm not sure, um, but anyway, so that is their tie as far as that part goes, uh, yeah, so, there you have it, anyway, so Ireland, which is 316 billion, uh, uh up to over, uh, plus two year over year, uh, Luxembourg, 301 billion, Cayman Islands, 293 billion, Switzerland, 274 billion, Belgium, uh, Home of Euroclear, uh, 265 billion, France. So basically, it seems like at least a combination of both contractual obligations when it comes to um, uh, corporate uh, treasuries uh, or bonds, and let's see, maybe also um, uh, just the usual money laundering sort of thing, you know, putting your money, out, putting your billions out outside the country. Uh, dom uh, domestic creditors of the U.S. government, uh, U.S. government in uh, internal holdings, 6.5 or 6.52 trillion, a record up by 48 billion from the prior quarter, and by 411 billion year over year, according to Treasury Department data. These funds are held by U.S. government pension funds for military personnel, uh, personnel, federal civilian employees, the U.S. Social Security Trust Fund, and other federal government funds that invest their balances exclusively in Treasury Security. So basically, we owe ourselves. So, yeah, okay, um, let's see. Uh, their share of the, the incredible spike in U.S. national debt has continued to drop, and March reached a new multi-decade low of 21.5% uh, down from the share of 45% in 2008. Um, I missed something here. Let's see, da -da -da. In other words, the government owes, them, owes these funds to current and future beneficiaries of those funds, and not, not to itself. Actually, that's a part of itself. Um, they are agencies within the government. So they owe the beneficiaries like myself who are within that with that same okay anyway uh, the share of the Fed's holdings of Treasury securities of the total debt has started to decline last year and at the end of March dipped to 19.8 percent of the incredible spike U.S. national debt. These are only Treasury securities on the Fed's books and does not include large amount of MBS, which is mortgage backed securities, and other securities uh, the Fed holds. U.S. banks, $1.7 trillion, according to the Federal Reserve Board of Government, uh, Governor Data, uh, this was up by $40 billion from the prior quarter, and by $410 billion over year, uh, year over year. Banks stuffed into the gills with cash are going on Treasury securities now that they're paying a percent a percentable uh, yield. They now hold 5.6% uh, of the incredible spike in U.S. national debt. Uh, other U.S. institutional and individual investors, uh, 8.8 trillion, by the way, actually, um, banks were uh, reselling, were reintroducing Treasuries um, for those amounts to get the money out of the economy because that was actually the beginning of when the first portion before uh, before supply chains came in came into effect with inflation those were some of the first parts of how because of inflation as far as upward goes was there was too much money in the banking sector and not enough going into the economy so what happened was they, re, they repoed or my issue is they uh, <laughs> re, uh, repurchased those uh, those treasuries, and that money went back into the Fed, and that's basically why their spreadsheet grew a little bit because that money was back on treasuries, uh, actually uh, uh, collecting yields as far as the part goes. Um, well, yeah, it was like zero to twenty-five percent as far as uh, as far as the part goes. So yeah, anyway. Let's see, up to seven, uh, 722 billion from the prior year and up by 2.4 trillion from March 2020. 
These include uh, bond mutual funds and money and money market funds, U.S. pension funds, individual investors such as him, uh, U.S. insurance companies, state and local governments, and other and uh, U.S. entities. Yeah, uh, U.S. entities are probably selling, selling out their bonds or uh, yeah, selling out their bonds to the Fed to get um, financial help for expanding or some to that effect. Uh, the next. Uh, the next article I'm going to read will be about uh, the Gimme, uh, Gimme Fay or some like that. Uh, I'll get to it momentarily. And here are the national debt stacked up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the end of that one actually. Let's see. There we go. Next one. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, Guinea May. There's a <laughs> Yeah, Guinea May, yeah, which is Government National Mortgage Association, or Guinea May. Uh, this is basically a HUD. Uh, Guinea May Mortgage Backed Securities expands affordable housing in America by linking global capital markets to the national housing market. N nature of program Guinea May guarantees investors, security holders, and the timely payment of principal and interest on securities issued by private lenders that are backed by pools of Federal Housing Administration or FHA, Veterans Affairs uh, (VA), Rural Housing Service uh, (RHS), and uh, Public and Indian Housing or PIH uh, mortgage loans. The full faith and credit guarantee of the U.S. government that Guinea May places on mortgage-backed securities lowers the cost of and maintains the supply of mortgage financing for government-backed loans. In the Guinea May 1 program, all uh, mortgages in a pool are fixed rate uh, single-family mortgages with the same interest rate. The mortgage interest rates must all be the same and the same lender must issue the securities. With the exception of Guinea May, one pools that are used as a collateral far st uh, for state or local bond financial financing programs and for which Guinea May provides special consideration. Guinea May uh, one uh, securities as an I some like that. I think it's probably I securities have a servicing and guarantee fee that totals 50 percent uh, 50 basis points and the minimum pool such as 1 million uh, oh sorry uh, pool such uh, pool size is 1 million there we go the to issue a guinea may uh, one security and a pr uh, approved lender applies for a commitment from guinea may for the guarantee of securities the lender originates or requires mortgage loans and assembles them into a pool of mortgages the guinea may one program uh, permits uh, lenders to issue securities backed by pools of single family multifamily and the manufactured housing loans where the interest rate is the same for each loan in the pool the lender decides to whom to sell the security and then submits the uh, documents to guinea may's pool processing agent the agent prepares and delivers the guinea may guaranteed security to the investors Designated by the lender, the lender is responsible for selling the securities and servicing the underlying mortgages. Issuers of Guinea May 1 uh, uh, securities are also responsible for paying security holders on the 15th day of each month. Now, I don't know if this is still the case because there's no actual date on this um, article, uh, but or the HUD article really is it's on the HUD. Uh, uh, website, uh, but the applicant, the applicant eligibility, a firm must be approved as an issue based on capital requirements, staffing experience criteria, and infrastructure. The firm must also be an FAA, FHA approved lender in good standing. So I think that a good portion of where the mortgage-backed securities will probably go into HUD-type housing. And it's odd because I said originally when I realized that um, that people were being thrown out, unfortunately, and people like BlackRock, Blackstone, and I guess Ginny May were purchasing um, these uh, securities. Um, my first thought is, 
it looks like that they are uh, kicking people out after they, they lose their places, even though it is not a fault of their own. They're not like they wanted to, you know, not pay rent and stuff like that. Stuff like that. Um, unlike what some people on the right, some people on the left have said in the, uh, in the last year and a half, two years. Um, and another reason why uh, so much money has actually gone into those type of programs that help stop uh, inv uh, evictions. Um, which a lot of times has helped and other times it hasn't. Uh, but anyway, um, I said uh, when, I, when I read that the Fed was buying mortgage backed securities uh, and all this stuff was happening, I was wondering out loud, I was wondering, uh, I wonder if they're going to sell these or, you know, something like this uh, to the to HUD because there's going to be a very big demand for low-income housing and I happen to live in low-income housing as it is uh, so I have a first-hand experience of that um, and the first hand, my first-hand experience is uh, the HUD uh, in 2010 took away the power of, um, of uh, general property maintenance that the city would have provided uh, and pretty much sold that or outsourced that to private property management. Now, these private property management could be um, a, a, uh, a, a corporation that is based or owned or invested in by the same banks that purchase those, uh, those securities and then have to get a deal with uh, the government to get a regular guaranteed um profit off of it every month uh so basically we're at, see 80 percent of rent through hud is paid for so that means that say uh, you, the market value for an apartment is like 1300 uh, they pay 80 percent, so you pay about what 400 or something like that so uh but it's but it's all based on how much you pay or how much you get paid you know how much your gross income is and because everybody's being being thrown out, uh, you and there's a lot of immigrants coming in as well, uh, either through uh, corporate means, as in like the corporations are are hiring them uh, f fresh out the boat, as it were. Uh, this, by the way, um, or uh, crossing some sort of border or whatever else the case may be, um, they're getting into low-income housing as well which is not a bad thing i mean and they can contribute to society as far as taxes and whatnot so cool i myself am not against that um i am however against people who want to sit there and say that and then at the same time want them thrown out even though that they've been paying like actual taxes property taxes and other things anyway that's not that's not here nor there it's a different thing it was, the point being is, it turns out that I may have actually been right in regards to that. Uh, and all the insight that I've been saying uh, have turned out to be correct on in some form has been because I've been so into this modern monetary theory because it, it forces you to look at every aspect of the economy. It doesn't just show you the supply side or show you the monetary side. It shows you everything and it tells you they need to go outside the country outside you know wh whatever um country you may be in and see what's going on and see the, su the supply chain so i credit mmt i credit warren mosler Steffi chelton mike, uh, mike norman and all of them for the insights that i've been, that i've i've seen now as far as that part goes um anyway okay Oh wow. Okay, that was <laughs> Wow, I have another raider. Or someone just played Screamo. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I think I have another raid though. Um <laughs> Andy Attack twenty eighteen, thank you for the raid. And this and Slayer music. Thanks for playing Screamo. Um. Hey, welcome back. Um, 
Yeah, earlier I was just talking about uh, Jeff Bezos getting into the real estate business. And according to Yahoo, uh, Jeff Bezos increases his bet on single family housing market. So he's getting on the he's getting on, he's getting in on the whole thing. The billionaire funder of uh, Amazon.com, uh, Jeff Bezos, just made his second investment in the real estate investment platform, Arrived Home, during the company's uh, the company's 25 million Series A round. Bezos' personal investment uh, company, Bezos Expeditions, uh, first invested in uh, Arrived uh, Arrived Home during the company's 37 million seed round in 2021. About, about arrival homes arrived uh, is the first sec qualified real estate investment platform that allows virtual virtually anyone to buy shares in single family rental properties with a minimum investment of only one hundred dollars the company acquires the rental homes and allows individuals investors to become owners in the properties by purchasing shares through the platform arrived uh, arrived uh, arrived homes manage the assets while investors collect passive uh, income through quarterly dividends in addition addition to earning a return through appreciation to date arrived homes has fully funded 102 properties with a total of value of over 40 million um, the event the company plans to use the 25 million in funds to further build out its team secure properties in new markets and provide the option to invest in short-term rental properties and platforms real estate investment platforms that are, that allow individuals to invest directly in specific assets typically followed uh, follow rule 506 C of regulation D which requires investors to be uh, accredited Arrived, home, uh, arrived homes, uh, ar however, utilize the more stringent Regulation A in order to provide access to non-accredited investors. This requires qualifications by the Security and Exchange Commission, which is a much more costly and time-consuming process than offering securities through Regulation D. Another option for non-accredited investors that's gaining traction in the real estate industry is Regulation CF, which allows companies to raise up to eight, oh, sorry, up to five million annually from non-accredited investors. Uh, Regulation CF is widely used by startups to raise capital through funding portals like uh, WeFunder, uh, Start Engine, and Republic. One of the newest uh, fin, uh, FINRA, or I guess it's uh, FIN real estate uh, agent, or however you want to say it, a regulated, uh, regulated regulation uh, CF funded uh, funding port, uh, portals I've, I've owned has accredited a marketplace for non accredited individuals to invest in various types of properties. Investors have a growing appetite for single-family homes, which is no surprise considering that the average rent in the U.S. has increased nearly 15% in the last 12, in the past 12 months, and as a high uh, and as high as 38 in cities like Miami over the same period. While the housing market is beginning to cool down in certain areas, home ownership is becoming even less affordable as higher interest rates are adding to the overall cost of buying a, ho buying a home. This is likely to continue adding strain in the supply of rental units, resulting in further rental rate increases. Uh, they don't mention the fact that uh, bigger, bigger real estate companies are coming in and buying those same types of houses at above market value, creating um, not only higher rent in that uh, in that uh, neighborhood, but also uh, price and pricing out uh, otherwise um, willing uh, home buyers. So that in itself is um, crowding out, which is one aspect of MMT that uh, mainstream economists claim MMT would be causing, which would be crowding out investments when the reality is the other way around. Pretty much like almost everything they do. Um, let's see. Another thing I want to talk about. Let me just get to that. Okay. So I uh, wanted to talk about one up from Axios.com. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
Okay, so let's see. This is uh, the Fed's 2.7 trillion mortgage problem. Uh, the Fed holds a mortgage backed securities is now 2.72 uh, 2 trillion, which I think I went over in the first place. Uh, if you look, if you took out a mortgage over the last couple of years, there's a good chance the holder of the loan is America's uh, central bank, a consequence of its monetary stimulus efforts throughout the pandemic. The Fed will face a series of political and economic headaches as it attempts to move away from subsidizing home lending by shrinking its portfolio of mortgage-backed securities. The problem, extracting itself from this mortgage risk, crashing the housing industry, and creating intense political blowback for occurring financial losses. Back in February 2020, the Fed owned $1.4 trillion in mortgage-backed securities, and the number was falling rapidly, but when the pandemic took hold, the central bank began a new round of bond purchasing known as quantitative easing swelling then number to 2.7 trillion the policy contributed to ultra low mortgage rates that stimulated home buying and refinancing activity until recently now as the fed seeks to tighten monetary policy to combat inflation it wants to shrink that it wants to shrink that portfolio if it may turn out to be easier said than done the Fed says that by September, uh, it will reduce the mortgage portfolio by up to $35 billion per month, emphasizes on up to. The numbers will probably upshoot that. Uh, the, re uh, the reason for now, the Fed is just looking to let its holdings shrink as securities get paid off. But with mortgage uh, rates way up in recent months, people have little incentive to sell their homes or refinance a mortgage. So these mortgages are likely to stay on the Fed's books longer. With unappealing opt, uh, options, it could simply accept that it will continue to have an outsized role in the housing market and a bigger balance sheet than it might, than it might prefer. Or it could begin selling the securities on the open market, a probability or possibility that the minutes of its March policy meeting said could happen down the road. Actually, that's something I, I said a long time ago, too, actually, uh, before they even said it. Um, let's get the program uh, Let's get the program we've got underway and, uh, and up to speed, but then once we've got it underway, I think it'll be worth taking a look at when at what is happening to the mortgage-backed securities on our balance sheet, Thomas Barkin, president of the Fed uh, Reserve Bank of Richmond, tells Axios. I'm certainly open to targeting, targeted excuse me, and disciplined way to sell into market if we're not heading towards a primary treasury balance sheet that we've seen uh, said we want, he said. Yes, but... That would that will create its own problems. If the Fed sells mortgage securities that pay low rates at a time when the prevail, prevailing rates are much higher, it will occur, incur big financial losses and reduce the funds of the central bank returns to the Treasury. In that scenario, expect officials to face tough questions from Capitol Hill to explain why they've lost billions of dollars on behalf of the American people. Well, let's see. Um, that, that happened because not enough regulation on uh, speculation and hedge funds and other um, company corporations like that, and also keeping um, the uh, the corporate bonds that are that uh, are from corporations that are what we call zombie corporations that keep you know uh, paying paying it off but never able to pay it totally off. Uh, that's why I, I would say that the bank is probably losing on a lot of what uh, they invest in as far as the part goes. Um, plus, the selling would, like, would likely push mortgage rates up further. At a time, the housing industry is already starting to groan under the pressure of rising rates. Home builders, real estate agents, and other influential industry groups will make their unhappiness known to elected officials. The Fed's pandemic action fueled a housing boom as it tries to withdraw that support. It could be a bad news. It could be bad news for housing and the Fed's uh, standing on Capitol Hill. 
the only way I can see any of that happening in my, in just in my layman's way uh, is they go to the uh, they go to the open market and sell off those treasury bonds, uh, mortgage backed to treasury securities, to either BlackRock, Blackstone, um, and do what do what I just said as far as uh, the uh, Guinea 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 May and turn a lot of those into low income housing because still there is a lot of uh, low income housing that is um, that is needed uh, in every area of you know that's not uh, been uh, gentrified or is it gentrified uh, where uh, they make up the neighborhood to look more white I guess um, seen a lot of neighborhoods that were once uh, primarily um, rented by minorities minorities um, pretty much uh, they were uh, they were taken out because of rent increases and and the only people that had the money at that time, they still do, are uh, influential white people, pretty much, or you know, influential African Americans, you know, also uh, have that. Um, but yeah, that's what happens. Part of the part it was a regentrification, is what is what I meant to say. Anyway, uh, let's see, was there anything else I want to talk about here? Um, let's say, da, da, da. Uh, share one more thing here, and this is by the New York Fed, I believe. Uh, let's see, agency mar uh, mortgage backed securities. Uh, New York Fed authorized by the federal, okay, this is what I think I was, was going for. Um, the Federal Open Market Committee to buy and sell agency market backed securities for the system, system open market account, uh, or SOMA, to the extent necessary to carry out the most recent HOMA directive. A uh, dollar roll and coupon swap transaction may also be ex executed as needed to help facilitate the settlement of outstanding MBS purchases. Since the end of 2008, the FOMC has directed the New York Fed's uh, open market trade desk to purchase and reinvest agency um, uh, markets backed securities for the SOMA portfolio on several occasions to implement monetary policy efficiency and effectively. These transactions are executed with primary dealers, in addition, big banks and all that, uh, in addition to agency uh, mortgage backed securities, which were first purchased in uh, early 2009. Other security purchases have in included treasury securities, agent debt securities, and agency uh, commercial mortgage backed securities. Additional information on uh, on MBS uh, mortgage backed securities operations is available on facts on agency uh, MBS reinvestment. That's pretty much what I want to say as far as that part goes. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you got some one entertainment and two some knowledge. Um, so, um, support this channel and also check out realprogressive.org. Uh, peace out for now.